definitely much brighter in uh, the vlog and as you film than as in real life. <laughs> Although there, there is a, there is a comparability in terms of the, the, what the camera sees here. Uh, it's anyway, it's, it's it's about uh, oh yeah, it gives me the time right here. Twenty three hours and uh, forty three minutes into the twenty uh, fifth day of May. Uh, this is the ending for the twenty fifth day uh, for the our life as cyborg alpha vlog, and but also this is the beginning of the new observations vlog, which. Uh, gives you a real sight into what observation is all about. It's not going to be exciting <laughs> because a lot of times it's just simply watching uh, and seeing what happens. We, we collect a number of, in, a bit of information at a time and over the weeks and months uh, it starts to add up. So this is observing season. Uh, it's not necessary for any one particular thing. We, do, we have a basket of observations that we are interested in uh, and this begins. So this is going to be the first clip, which is going to be about five, ten minutes. And uh, we'll go in from there. I mean, it's it's certainly a very nice day out today. It's uh, uh, it's cooled down since 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 the beginning. People have noticed that the because the paper has noticed it uh, that there have been a lot of solar flares, a lot of uh, coronal mass ejections. Uh, this is what produces a lot of the heat. It came up get up to about 84 degrees today. Uh, and so you watch how the uh, the news constantly changes its reports to meet the reality that, that the prediction is off and off in terms of what they were going to predict was going to happen. But uh, they can hear the wind. You can hear the you can hear the, how the wind is uh, uh, is blowing my uh, weather dampening uh, materials that I have on the door because I'm sitting out front uh, out the front of out the front side of my door this is how it begins typically this is how observation begins it begins here and it begins at night because as you can see the clouds are coming in the clouds are rolling in when they weren't sort of rolling in during the day and you can actually see uh, a direction from the from the moon you can see the direction that they're moving in and they're coming in uh, from a uh, sort of a westerly direction, they're heading east, and so basically the building that is uh, horizontal to the uh, to the picture to to the frame is east west. That's aligned east west, and uh, the building. Let me see if I get my finger in this at all. Get you a pointer. This has been. Oh, here we go. There's there's the finger. Okay, this building along here is a line north south. So we're put the finger back in here again. This is north, and that's further south. Towards the edge of, it, edge of the building. The finger that if we do the finger from below, I'm gonna get that. No, I can't do that. Uh, anyways, there's a building to the building. As I bring my finger in, let's try to do this now. Let's get this and right. Oh, there we go. It's a little far off, that's all. That building there, that's the horizontal building. That's east-west. And so you can now get a direction. You can see a direction as to which where the clouds are moving. The moon behind it gives you an a, 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 a extra uh, assistance. So you could do it. You're doing the astronomy in terms of the naked eye astronomy, but at the same time, you're using the starlight, the moonlight, to determine uh, what the layer of clouds are, the layer of atmospheres there are, because uh, there are more than one layer of layer of atmosphere. So there's a number of atmospheres that there are between yourself and the object that you're looking. That's that, that's sort of lighting the camera, and uh, this gives you a way of doing. The, you see, you see how the light comes to the clouds. You see how it interacts with the clouds and this gives you a means of doing atmospheric physics uh, and again I do have the satellite but it took me six years of doing this uh, to sort of uh, get the satellite images right to bring in other sources that will sort of uh, firm up or shore up the information comes in through the satellite it's just not the satellite information itself 
and it allows you to do observation uh, uh, even at places where you're not. And otherwise, it's just sort of sitting out and listening to uh, the wind. Things happen very slowly here. It doesn't happen rapidly at all. Well, it is May 26th, and we, it is uh, two hours and 35 minutes into the day, and we're transitioning to the uh, uh, back research desk. I uh, did some work here, fixed up uh, an error that had occurred on my GoPro. Uh, I had emptied out the, clip, the, the SD card at my parents' house, uh, forgot to reformat the card, so it was still full, rode back, uh, recording uh, another road vlog, so just offloaded it now onto the onto uh, the holding device uh, and uh, made the correction. Put the uh, SD card, uh, the micro SD card, back into uh, uh, the GoPro and recharged and reformat it. So everything's taken care of now. It's just a matter of. Uh, uh, labeling, do, renaming the, uh, the the file names so that it's got the date the date in there. Uh, once it's got the date in there, uh, it will go up to uh, my uh, my uh, um, cloud drive on Google, and eventually, at some point in time, it will enter into uh, the uh, road vlogs. So uh, things are going well. Happy with the transition. Film the uh, film the uh, first uh, uh, the first um, the first uh, observation vlog. Uh, it's, it's, it's for atmospheric physics and a number of other different things. So uh, I'll be sort of sitting up and trying to figure out wh how, where I'm going to put the vlog. Uh, some of these vlogs, extra vlogs, are, are being filmed, but they haven't gone out yet. Uh, and because there's still some uh, administration work to do on the uh, posting end, so uh, that hasn't been done yet. But uh, that's kind of the way things go. So right now, I'm at the I'm going to be doing the YouTube stroll. I'll probably have some cereal to eat and uh, end up going uh, transitioning to bed around uh, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. Well, it is the 27th of May. It is uh, 2 hours and 34 minutes in, and 24 minutes into the, to the day. Uh, I spent most of, well, yeah, most of Wednesday sleeping. That's so, there's not going to be much in terms of a Wednesday vlog, but oh, the way these things run together, it won't be too badly noticed. Uh, but anyway, th this, this is what typically happens. I do, I do miss days depending on the amount of work that has to be done. It is really an issue of, uh, uh, well, 
partially it's the summer and it's time to take some time off because you push all your through well uh, with uh, the extreme body conditioning during the winter um, the loads of research that have to be done although the load of the research that, 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 that's being done now is about the same as as previous but I'm more used to it now so I haven't put anything extra on uh, I'm still working on the Voltaire issue uh, I'm looking at Leibniz right now uh, I know the different philosophers I want to take a look at uh, and I want to the, the, it's, it's how uh, the we'll call the modern world evolved from these particular points and the, the, in, in the key points in here that this is a, it's Voltaire it's Leibniz, it's Newton, uh, it's Dostoevsky, and then from there out, it's uh, Planck. And this is where you get into, eventually from Planck, you can move into Einstein. And But we won't be getting actually into Einstein, because uh, by the time Einstein came around, a large chunk of, uh, of science had already split off from, uh, from uh, philosophy, from religion. Uh, from the public perspective, the, it was always together. It was never there was never really a separation. It just was presented as such. Uh, basically, the whole concept of humanism, modernism, has almost completely collapsed. This is what we're going through right now. Is we're going through a collapse in philosophy that gave us what they call the sense of rules, the sense of normality. And as the sense of normality falls off, we move into a, a sphere, a sort of a, an ex existentialism of non-existence, that, that everything is simply conceptual, that nothing is real. And so that there are no rules. And this is what we're seeing with Antifa, this is what we're seeing with Black Lives Matter, we're seeing a lot with the election of Biden, and, 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 and almost any issue you can talk about today, it comes from the perspective of there are no rules, that you can do anything you want, and away you go. And this is sort of the, the, the destruction uh, of the West, is what we're seeing as the destruction of the West. And it, it, it was all laid out in Dostoevsky. It was based in the in the concepts brought forward by Voltaire, by Leibniz, by, by Newton, and, and, and a number of other, these other people. You can sort of see the evolution of what they were thinking being played out in real time in our current history. And so this does present a, a very interesting look at, particularly from the perspective of QLR, or just from the perspective of history, uh, how you see things really does matter. Uh, your reading matters, your history matters. Uh, a number of these things have an importance to them. And it's one of, in, in some ways, this is one of the joys of being a researcher, is you get to read and see all these different things. Uh, you get to do this level of exploration that most other people just don't do. Uh, and it, 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 it doesn't come in any particular direction. It just it, If you look at the observation video, the, the segment of the observation video that I posted in, in here, uh, you'll see that observation really, at it, 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 one, one, one point in terms of one day's worth of observation, really doesn't produce much of anything. And it takes a long time for anything significant to sort of really pop up. I mean, you get some interesting things here and there, but otherwise, uh, the amount of time you have to spend doing the work, doing the observation, it's a long time. And, and, and it is, is, is like a long car drive. I view this place in many ways like my vehicle. And, uh, you know, after 12 hours of doing whatever, you step out and you take a break and you sit outside and you relax and... Oh, in many ways, decompress, and that's what Wednesday is. Wednesday is simply a day of decompression. It's uh, you've been working all week long. You've been driving for the entire week, and it takes a toll on the body. There is a physiological cost to it, and uh, you end up sleeping for the entire day. So <laughs> that's kind of how things end up going. Well, a uh, package has come in, so we have a, a unboxing or unpackaging. Didn't expect this to come in, so I uh, wonder what it is. It's 
I have a feeling what it is. Yeah. This is amazingly quick. It is more of the storage box. These are they, they come out that look like like this and they expand. And they hold a lot of clothes and a lot of sheets. So this this is uh, for uh, my closet organ organizing. So this is what I'll be doing uh, later on, uh, starting tonight and tomorrow and through the week. I'll be organizing my closet more. Uh, this will bring in a lot more, a lot more space uh, for my clothes because I'll be able to put my winter clothes away, and uh, also the uh, winter sheets uh, will be able to go away too. So. Uh, yay for that. Well, the effort of vlog is real. It says a real vlog is real life. And as such, things that are typically, would typically be edited out in a show aren't, aren't edited out. I don't try to make this a show. This is my research log. This is uh, part of what I do. And uh, so things that other people keep out, keep out the vlog, because they only want to show, really show positive moments, uh, I keep in. They don't get edited out, including, you know, the different things I do with my eyes and, and so on and so forth. Oh, oh. I got in just about a few minutes ago, about a half hour ago. So it is 23 hours and 30 minutes into the 27th day of May, uh, 2021. I got in from uh, uh, my parents' house. Uh, I took the scooter. I wore the wrong jacket. <laughs> it ended up getting, it, it ended up a lot colder than I, than I had anticipated it to get. And the ride back was a little rough. Uh, had to do my best to sort of focus and keep the heat going uh, within, the, within my body, but at the same time keep my eye, my mind on the road. Ugh. And Lionel LeBron, Lionel Nation of of Lionel Nation, has been in the conversation quite a bit as I move further and further into the whole question of Voltaire and who he was. It kind of brings in Lionel uh, LeBron into the sort of the spectrum, if you will, the spectrum of an, of the intellectual. And you could classify intellectual just the way you can with autism, or any person with with a specific uh, type of personality. That there is a, not a single type, but rather a spectrum. And that Lionel is one type of personality within the spectrum that you can sort of. Uh, connect people like Voltaire, uh, more Voltaire than they do say Leibniz or Newton or or, or Planck, uh, because Newton, Planck, uh, and Leibniz, th their mathematics, their physics was top notch. They they set standards. Lionel sits in a commentary position where he does the analysis of these things. Uh, much the way Voltaire did. Voltaire didn't do any of the work. He was simply some type of analyst. Uh, he became famous, or actually more, more, more properly, he became infamous because rather than publishing in France the way he was supposed to, uh, he wasn't able to get the right letters from the crown to get the permission to print. And this, this whole understanding of the, looking at Voltaire and what he did and how he did it uh, brings up the whole question of freedom of speech in terms of what is freedom of speech. And you'll see that most people have no clue what freedom of speech is, including Lionel LeBron. <laughs> uh, but he did print, uh, Voltaire did print in France. Uh, he was able to get his books out in France, his publications out. And people picked him up. And what the whole claim to fame... Is the whole thing of if you tell someone not to do something or, or this is forbidden to read, that's why they pick it up. They won't spe specifically to pick it up. And as they picked up this illicit book, this illegal book with illegal information in it, forbidden information in it, they became enthralled and wanted to have him, the ladies who competed with each other for salon parties, for these different uh, social events where 
uh, the women and some other invited gentlemen would, would gather in some lady's parlor of the salon and have this sort of rousing discussion on various matters of the day. And one of the things to do was to bring in someone who was illicit, uh, who was illegal, and seemingly flaunt the rule and say, we're going to have a discussion that is not approved by the crowd. And you got to sort of... And this is how someone bring, uh, creates their fame. And of course, other people want to do the same thing, so they jump on the bandwagon, they start behaving like Voltaire. Well, I have this illegal thing here, or I know Voltaire. In other words, there are people who... who, who, who like the uh, the Navy, the, the, like the Navy SEALs who killed Bin Laden. How many other? There are thousands of them now. Everybody knows a Navy SEAL, and I know, and I you know because I know, and I have a friend, and the the argument of I I have a friend or I know because I have a friend is one that still echoes on today, but it was a, as true in, in Voltaire's time. As it is currently, and I think things didn't stay the way, you know, we have social media, so the, 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 the social gatherings that we see in the social media weren't, aren't something new. They were done in a more restricted manner according, uh, uh, within the people of society. If you were the proper no society, you would have your uh, salon parties and the word would get around. And of course, you had letters and stuff like that. But if you were, let's say you were illiterate, you didn't know how to read and write, well, where would you get your information from anyways? You know, would there, there still be this sort of salon thing? And the answer would be yes, because they would be fed. These would be your musicians. Your musicians, the music, would carry the information of the day, what was going on, what was topical, what was not topical. So the social aspect of life really hasn't changed. The nature of our social inter interactions have changed. We're not as personal as we were, as they were back then. Now everyone stays in their home. This is what the whole thing was with the uh, CVD, the uh, lockdowns, the pandemic. It was all done because we all had we we, we could uh, social distance and still be social uh, because we had virtual devices, we had uh, virtual presence. Uh, prior to the virtual presence, uh, what you had were real presence, you, you a real presence, a real uh, existence where you'd gather in cafes and con uh, tea houses and the like to get the proper information. Other people would be in bars, sports bars. Uh, there are were a number of ways to socialize in actuality rather than virtually uh, prior to the internet. And so what happens is this, we're, we're, we're swinging, but we're not necessarily swinging away from the actual social aspect of it. How we socialize is changing. The socialization itself isn't changing. But yet, Lionel LeBron says, oh, this is the death of our particular culture. Well, not really, because it depends on what culture you were looking at. Are you looking at the upper level society, you know, society, culture, the upper level society? Are you looking at the middle class? Are you looking at the lower class? It depends on what you're looking at. Uh, and so this is where history comes in, and history doesn't have to, you don't have to be a genius to sit down and go through history. And it's not within the textbooks. History isn't in the textbook. You can go out and find out, find uh, personal sources, first-hand sources on, uh, on things that went on that were, would be considered to be history. Uh, and this is what I do. I don't read, go out and read textbooks. I go and read uh, as much as I can find, and can, can do that on the internet. It takes time to do it. You look for first-hand sources. And you sit down, if you need a dictionary or you need some way to translate, you sit down and you do the work. And it's, it, it does take a long period of time to do it. And of course, if something is popular enough, you'll have a lot of people translating it and, and giving their opinions or uh, uh, perspective on what was, what was, or who was Voltaire, or what was Voltaire, uh, if you're talking about the philosophies, the ideas, and so on and so forth. And you can get a, a, a wide variety of what was going on. If you know about physics and mathematics, you can go on and compare his contemporaries, like Descartes, uh, and, and this is the people he battled against, Descartes, Newton, uh, and, and Leibniz, to find out that he really didn't say anything. His entire claim to fame 
was that it was he, his work was illegal. He was listen. He was the anti-establishment at that time, and that's the whole thing. That's that's the entire body of Voltaire can be summed up. I'm not approved by the government. That's the whole thing. He's kind of like if you watch, uh, go take a look at the on, on uh, YouTube. Look for Barchester Chronicles. There's a character in the Barchester Chronicles known as Bertie. He's a playwright. He's an artist. He does, uh, well, nothing all day long. And he accomplishes nothing all day long. And this is who Voltaire was. Because he was, wasn't the proper type of character the way people would. And so he'd become, in many ways, an amusement at a party. He'd become the amusement. Because he wasn't acting properly. He would do things that he, you know, the proper society wouldn't do. But he did it anyway, but he ne it never really sort of amounted to anything. But then he had so much money, it didn't matter. Because he, he just, and if he didn't have money, he borrowed it. <laughs> and this is part of, the, part of the thing, is that the, there were a lot of people up in, society, uh, in upper society who were, who were broke. And they basically lived on handouts. If you could amuse somebody at a party, you'd get a little bit of a, uh, you'd find a benefactor who got a little bit of money, and they'd get some money from them, and, uh, you know, bit by bit, and, you, and, 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 and for those you knew, you'd borrow. And so, typically, you'd live your life, entire life in debt. And this is, this this pops up in, uh, in Barchester Chronicles, along with uh, some of the behaviors you can take a look at. Uh, you can go also to, uh, if you want to see some of the behaviors, go look at uh, Jeeves and Worcester. That's on YouTube as well. And then go back and look for Jane Austen's, I think it's Pride and, Pre Pride, Pride and Prejudice, and then uh, Sense and Sensibilities. The titles will, will, will sort of make a lot more sense once you have an understanding of personality and who these personalities were. And then you go back. Then you can go back into uh, Dostoevsky, and sort of bring all the characters together. Bring all the stuff you've learned. And this a, this could actually take a couple of years to do, uh, and bring it back and then compare it against Lionel LeBron. This is you know. But anyways, uh, I think that's about it for now. Uh, the time is winding down, and uh, I will see you uh, in a couple hours uh, when it is the. 28th of May.